Now we all know that training a small dog presents some unique challenges compared to training a big dog. So today, Instructor Shannon and our special guest at Edna the Pug are joining us and we're going to talk about how, what sort of differences there are when it comes to training the little guys. I'm Ken Steep and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Hi there, we are here today with Edna the Pug and we are working on some walking on lead skills. And we wanted to take the angle today of teaching a smaller dog how to walk nicely with you on leash. So what we are going to do to start with is just make sure that first off, we've got some really tasty treats and we've got a dog that is willing to follow those treats. So the first step I'm gonna take here is I'm gonna make sure that Edna will just follow a little lure. Yes. I'm gonna mark with a yes to let her know that she's done something right. And then I'm gonna release that treat. Yes, good for you. What a smart girly. <gasps> what about this one? Yes, and release that treat. So Edna is more than willing to follow that treat. So I'm gonna move on to the next stage of my training. So the next step that I am going to take here with Edna is I'm just gonna encourage her to my side. When I do my walking with her out on the street, I want my dogs to always be at my left hand side. So what I wanna do is just convince Edna that my left hand side is a great place to be. So I'm gonna use that lure I just practiced and I'm just gonna bring her into my side, yes. And then I might move a bit to the side. Yes, good girl. Come here, girly. Yes, and I'm just gonna practice that. Edna. Atta girl. Yes. Yes, good girly, okay. I just wanna convince her that being at my left hand side brings her lots of really high value rewards. So once I've gotten my dog used to the idea that getting into my side is a wonderful place to be, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to add my motion to it. So I've got my leash gathered up properly and my ideal situation is that I never put tension on that leash when my dog is doing what I want them to do. So I always wanna make sure that I'm not physically pulling on the leash, it's nice and loose and the food is doing the work for me. So now that I've done some repetition with just rewarding her at my side, good girly, I'm just gonna walk a little bit, yes, and reward. Edna, atta girl, good. It might just be one step, yes. And then I'll give her that treat. It might be two steps. Yes, very good. I might turn a circle. Yeah, good for you. The idea here is that I'm letting my dog know as I move, that being in that position at my side is absolutely the best place to be and it brings the highest value rewards. Now, one of my favorite tips to give for people working with small dogs is get something that is longer than your arm that you can use to help lure your dog and that's really gonna save your back, especially if you've already got back problems. This is gonna be a saving grace. So I have a back scratcher here, which is fantastic because I can put my soft treat on the end of it there or I could put some peanut butter there or some cheese whiz that my dog's gonna lick away at. And I can use that to deliver that food down without me having to do all that bending over. Now, what I really like about the back scratcher is that you can make it shorter. So now I'm luring a little bit higher Shorter again, luring a little bit higher until the point where I can really just fade that out and use it to deliver the rewards by hand or use it to deliver the, the reward down to my dog but without all that length in it. So you can use a wooden spoon or I've heard of people using um, uh, paper towel rolls or wrapping paper rolls depending on the size of your dog. So get something that is going to save your back especially when you're doing a lot of training with a young, young dog. Alrighty, so my next step here is that I am going to use a little bit more upright body language because I've got a small dog, I still wanna use my lure, but I'm gonna to start to fade it away. And these steps are not something that you are going to do as quickly as we're doing on this video. You're gonna spend lots of time on each of these steps and you're gonna work in situations where life is nice and calm and quiet and then add in distractions as the dog starts to show that they have understanding of what you're looking for from them. So what I'm gonna do now with Edna, I'm gonna get up off the floor I'm gonna gather up my leash so that it's nice and loose. I'm gonna show her that I've got some really yummy treats, but I'm gonna do it from up high. And now what I'm gonna do is start to add a cue into things. And we use let's go around here. So I'm gonna take my treats. I'm gonna say, look what I got, are you ready? Let's go. And I'm just gonna take a couple of steps and I've got her attention, yes. When I like what I'm getting, yes. I'm gonna say yes and deliver the treats down, Edna. Atta girl, yes. 
Very good, right here, right here, right here. Yay, good for you. So I can still show her that I've got these goodies. I dropped a couple on the floor. I'll just help her get back into attentive mode. Yes, good for you. Once I've got her focus back, I'll work on standing up a little bit again. Yes, very good. And continue on with my walking. Now, in the interest of saving my back, I am going to start to work with the food up at my waist. And again, this is after a lot of repetition. We're speeding through things for the purpose of this video here, but it's gonna take you weeks to get the dog to the point where they can walk nicely on leash in a quiet environment. And then you're gonna work with the distractions as well. So keep in mind that it's gonna take you a lot of training time to get there. Don't rush through anything and don't skip any of the steps. We'll skip a few here for this video. So what I'm gonna do now with Edna, she found a treat on the ground. Hi, girly. What I'm gonna do now with her is I'm gonna show her that cookie. I'm gonna get her into position and I'm gonna tell her, let's go. And then I'm gonna bring the treat up to my waist. Yes. And then deliver it down right away. Yes, good girly. Edna, if she gets a little distracted, that's okay. I'll just help her. <laughs> good girl. She's a very excited girl. Yes, very good. Let's go up to my waist. Yes, good job. So good. Edna. Atta girl, yes, good, let's go. And I'm just gonna keep building that reinforcement. All I want is for Edna to realize that walking beside me is absolutely spectacular. So I'm gonna keep delivering a lot of rewards in the initial phases and very high value rewards to help Edna realize that this is a fabulous place to be even when I'm moving. So my final step in weaning away from the food lure, here Edna a girl is to actually leave it in my pocket now what I'm gonna do is make sure I use good timing mark what I like with my yes then I'm gonna reach into my pocket to reward and that's the step you need to take to make sure that you're not always having to have food in your hand in order to move your dog around and do your let's go exercise I'm gonna help Edna get in here Hi, girly good girl so I've got my one treat for that and then what I'm gonna do is leave my food in my pocket Edna good girly I'm gonna tell her let's go Yes, whoops. Yes, there she is. Now I'm gonna reach and reward. They're such tiny little treats. Edna, yes, good for you. That's so good. Edna, let's go. Yes, good girly. Let's go. Yeah, good for you. Edna. Good girl, yes, very nice. So because she was having trouble there, I went back to having a little bit of food more readily accessible. What I'm gonna do is just work to that point where it's easy for Edna to say, ah, I can focus and hang in here with you. And I'm gonna get to that point where I just reach after pinpointing with my yes word. What a good girl Edna is. Now I am working almost as hard, if not harder than Edna here. I'm actually starting to break out into a sweat. That's what you need to do. You need to work hard with your dogs to keep their focus, keep that attention on you and make them excited about the idea of learning to walk nicely at your side. Up to this point, you've probably been working with your dog in a very quiet environment to try to get these lessons in. And that's so important in the initial stages of training. If you think about the idea of trying to learn calculus while you're riding on a roller coaster, probably not gonna happen. It's the same idea with your dogs. If you're trying to do the first stages of their training in a busy park or someplace where there's lots of distractions, that is going to work against you and it's gonna make your life a lot more difficult. But you do need to get to the point where your dog is willing to ignore any distractions that they might see, whether it's out there on the street or at the park or anywhere that you might go where you want your dog to walk nicely with you. So what you're gonna do is set that situation up. So start with your quiet environment, but add a couple of distractions and you might just do one at a time. So I've got a Kleenex box and a couple of toys here that I'm going to use as my distractions. But if my dog is really green or really excited about toys, I might just start with one of those to make it easy for him to be successful. Really, really important in dog training that you always set your dog up to have success. So keep that in mind. Temper the distractions based on your dog's ability at that point. And then as your dog progresses, you can add more and more distractions into the mix. So what I'm going to do with my distractions is I'm going to put them far enough away from where I'm working that my dog knows they're there, but he's not gonna have a super hard time ignoring those distractions. And I'm just gonna make the distractions harder and harder as my dog progresses through his training and as he starts to understand the expectation of what I have for him. 
I want to thank Edna the Pug for joining us today and helping Instructor Shannon show off some of the differences in training the little dogs versus the big dogs. I've included some of her social links below, uh, Twitter and Instagram, so make sure you check those out. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. Beside me is a link to more of our small dog training videos that you might want to check out. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training.